Maybe I put my cash in another pocket. You didn't put it anywhere, Tracy. This fine young man appropriated it. Would you stop projecting your own larceny on this fine young man? It is most unbecoming. Your faith is so appreciated, Miss Spencer. And I can't begin to thank you for posting my bail. You're welcome. You're free to leave. He's going to be walking out of here with your cash. I'm telling you, pat him down yourself and see. What a good idea. I will pat him down. Why? You project your larceny on this young man. This is something you would do, Luke. Not something that this young... You were saying... You framed him. Wife, come on. What's gotten into you? You're going to take this hustler's word over mine? You have stolen so much money from me over the years that it would not be beyond you to steal some more and blame it on an innocent bystander. If you believe that this slick devil is innocent, I've got an opera house in Sydney. Give it you. up, Luke. You were caught in the act well, please again. Please don't bite. Okay, Luke's right. I did try to take your money. Oh, that's brilliant. Now you're disarming me. Why don't you just say that you can't help yourself? It's just the thing. I try to stop, but I'm not sure I can. Try keeping your hands in your own pockets. It started when I was a kid. You know, I'd see something shiny or green, as the case may be, and I can't resist. Oh, man, now he's invoking childhood trauma. This is pure genius. Let him speak. I mean, mostly, mostly I do it for the challenge, you know, the, the thrill of, of getting away with it. But, you know, I'll, I also just need that money to live. Better to steal than starve. Oh, my God, he's selling and you're buying the whole load. Sheriff, a shovel! I take full and complete responsibility for my behavior. Why don't you just promise that you'll never steal anything again? I can't make that promise. You know, I'm sorry, but I have to support myself. You know, sometimes making ends meet means doing stuff I'm, I'm not proud of. You wouldn't be the first. I should never have taken advantage of your kindness and good nature. Well, it's not as if I can't spare the money. Popsicle, did that poison affect you more than you realize? It's like looking in the mirror, isn't it, Luke? Except a few decades later and a lot more hair. Ouch. I knew Ethan Lovett about two hours, and he relieved me of five large. Well, I gave that back. You still owe me 600 bucks. Oh, I have a plan. How about Mr. Lovett gives me the $600, and I apply it to your debt, and that way it'll only take you a thousand years to pay me off. Sweetheart. We're married. Everything I have is already yours. And if Mr. Lovett steals the money from you or me, we're both still out the cash. Good point. In that case, I forgive your debt. You're free and clear. What the hell is going on, Tracy? You never forgive anybody anything. I feel sorry for Mr. Lovett. That's a metaphysical impossibility. I can't believe you're falling for this scam. You're too smart, and I'm too smart to believe that you believe it. It is perfectly obvious that you led this young man astray, which is why I bailed him out, and I am leaving you here to consider your transgressions a while longer. You can't leave me in here. Luke's right. He doesn't deserve to be locked up. You're right. He deserves a lot more. Is there anything I can do to convince you to go easy on your husband? Listen to the boy, Tracy. He speaks the truth. <laughs> oh, really? So all of a sudden he's not a lying con artist anymore? Well, even a blind hog finds an acorn every once in a while. Oh, that's good. Don't listen to Luke. Down that road lies only regret and incarceration. But he loves you. How do you know that? Because, Tracy, whenever I'm incarcerated, I always regale my bunkmates with beautiful romantic tales of you, my luscious lamb chop. I do love you. You know I do. And I don't need you to plead my case. Just trying to help. 
Ignore him. We don't need him. You do, because without him, I would leave you here to rot. I knew you had a gracious heart, Mrs. Spencer. Don't expect gratitude. And find your own gravy train. And she's no patsy, I'm telling you. If she's not on to you now, she will be soon. It's your lucky day, Luke. I've paid. You are free to torment me as much as you want. Oh, baby. <laughs> All right, Ed. One side. Mine. What? Mine. Oh, those are my dice. Oh, yeah? I'll roll you for them. Snake eyes. That's a lucky throw. No, there's no luck about it. They're Luke's dice. They're loaded, just like he is. <laughs> Man, you really need to work on your trust issues, mate. Come on, baby, let's get out of here. What about Ethan? Oh, you bailed him out. That's more than he deserves. Yeah. Don't worry about me, Tracy. I'll be fine. Um, I'm used to being on my own. Oh, no, not the puppy dog eyes. I'm deeply disappointed in you, wife. You've turned into a pillar of mush. It's all gonna be fine. I don't want you to worry about a thing. Well, you've been amazing, and I will find some way to to thank you. Actually, I think we're gonna find something for you to do with the haunted star. Well, did I mention I'm a bartender? Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. He's a good one too. They're gonna love him at the Metro Court Bar. Luke, I've sunk a lot of money into the haunted star, and that added to the money you've stolen from me gives me the right to say who works there. Ethan's an asset. The female patrons will be attracted to him like bees to honey. Is there a, is there a salary for this great honor? Of course there is, seven fifty a week. Two hundred and you split tips with the house. Six fifty and my tips on my own. Six fifty? You don't need six fifty. With all the money, you're gonna skim out of my till? No skimming. You have my word of honor. <laughs> we all know what that's worth. You have no choice, Luke. Ethan is hired. And if he's half as aggravating to you as you are to me, he's a bargain.